Hello everyone. Welcome back to this new video. Uh, in this video, we will learn on how to configure a multi pre shared case society, and also we'll talk about a few use cases around which that can be used. Uh, so, multi pre shared key is is basically one single SSID which is configured on PSK, but you can actually enter multiple pre shared keys for multiple MAC addresses or multiple. Uh, different u different users connecting on the Wi-Fi society. So it gives you the flexibility of a PSK, but uh, flexibility of a dot one X, but gives you the ease of a PSK society. Okay, so we'll see how we can configure that and 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 what all things to uh, take care of and uh, what use cases can be uh, can be you know matched with this society. Uh, okay, so let's go to the MIS dashboard. This is how it looks like. I will go to the uh, config template directly, like a WLAN template here, where we can uh, go ahead and create the SSID. So if you remember, uh, this is my home org and this is my home template. Uh, we created a, the guest guest SSID in the last video where we talked about the sponsored guest authentication. Uh, I'm gonna create another WLAN in this one. Uh, and this one will be given as new underscore MPSK. Just to uh, uh, just to give that a hint of MPSK, multi pre shared key. Now in the security tab, I'm gonna anyway not gonna talk about all these settings here, which you can uh, understand from my other videos. But uh, in the security tab, as you can see on the screen, I have something called WPA2 multi with multiple passphrases. So I'll select this PSK with multiple passphrases. Now this comes in three flavors. Okay, one is local, one is radius PSK, one is cloud PSK. So I need to explain to you now what each of them really mean, okay? So local means you will be creating the multiple pre-shared keys and those keys will be stored locally on the AP. So even if you know the connection to the cloud is lost, uh, you still have clients getting onboarded and connecting absolutely fine. Uh, that is the advantage of a local PSK. However, uh, there is, you know, there is a limitation of 5,000 pre-shared keys or multiple pre-shared keys that you can actually store on the AP in the entire org. Uh, now, now that is uh, a good number. That's a very good number. However, we don't recommend, I mean, I don't recommend you to go and test that limit. So uh, if it's a significantly large network, you might want to go for the other options that I'm going to explain to you in a bit. So, uh, you know, in a small network, local PS, you know, in, in, in not a lot of devices connecting, uh, you can actually make, make use of this. But if you have a large enough network, you know, you might as well want to explore the cloud PSK part, which I will come to in a moment. So uh, then the other setting that, you know, that really comes here is the configure as a personal WLAN checkbox. Now, if you check this, it clearly states there is no connectivity between devices with different PSKs. So if you have multiple pre-shared keys created in a single SSID, and you know, a bunch of 10 devices is using, you know, are using P PSK one, and then the other 10 are using PSK two, and the other 10 are using PSK three. PSK one, PSK two, PSK three, these 30 devices will not be able to interact with each other. Like these 10 will not be able to interact with these 10, and then these 10 will not be able to interact with the other, other the last last 10, so, and, and vice versa. So uh, that's pretty much what uh, this checkbox does. So I can leave it unchecked for now. The next thing that you want to really check into this page is the VLAN part where you can define a single VLAN, a tagged VLAN, or you can define a list of VLANs. Uh, if you see the moment I clicked on a list, it says, you know, you can actually define these VLANs, but they have to be separated by commas. So in which scenarios are these used for? So I'll, I'll just write 10, 20, 30, and I can click on save at the bottom. Right, I'm sorry, it'll be, it'll be right here. Yeah, right here, it comes click. Anyway, I'll come to this. But uh, before we go down to that path, I wanna explain you what radius PSK means. Now, in some scenarios, if I click on radius PSK, uh, it's possible that you can have some keys also stored on the radius side. You know, on, so, so in this, the keys are stored on the external radius server. You can do that as well. You can fetch the keys from there. There's, an there's also an option of a default PSK in that scenario and a default VLAN ID here. What these two settings mean is, if by any chance the radio server is not reachable, you know, uh, you can use one default PSK and a default VLAN ID, more like a quarantine VLAN ID, which will be used to give them limited access if the user is not able to get to the radio server. You know, in, in, in the meantime, they can get some limited access to the network and do their work. Uh, which can be defined under default PSK and a default VLAN ID. So you can create a radius PSK also. Now, 
the third setting is is kind of awesome because in the cloud PSK, uh, by the way, this feature of cloud PSK is only available uh, in a specific version, version zero point one zero or higher. It is not available on at the lower versions. It's 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 pretty it's pretty recent that this was launched, and and what this says is you know you can create as many keys as you want, but those keys will be stored on the MIST cloud. Okay, those keys will not be stored on the APs. Those keys will be stored on the MIST cloud. And that way you are able to now manage as many keys as you want for the entire org. There is no limitation as such. And this is actually the way to go in a network, which is really large, where we can expect expansion, where we can expect a lot of devices hopping on in the future. So, you know, by all means, explore this. This is what you need to do on this particular page of security and the SSID creation. So I'll keep it to local for now. And I'll check this box now as create as personal, uh, configure as personal WLAN, because I don't want the devices to interact with each other. I'll scroll down and I will click on create. The SSID should be created now and shown onto my, yeah, it, I'll just zoom out, good, okay. Yeah, the name comes right here and it is uh, on the site with this home and it is broadcasted by all the access points, so it's awesome. Uh, now, the next thing you need to do is you need to create the multiple pre shared keys, okay? So I'll click on the org. I can go on pre shared keys right here under wireless. Once I click on that, I get this page. I'll click on add a key at the top. I'm gonna to create keys. Let me just quickly move this video here and I'll click on add key. This new page that opens up, uh, understand all the fields here. So this is the key name. I'll write uh, IOT one, for example, uh, IOT one. I'll select the SSID for uh, MPSK. And by the way, the reason why I wrote IoT one is uh, this is an extremely useful uh, way of configuration in IoT in the IoT space, right? Uh, you you really want the ease of configuring the SSID, uh, configuring the password on the IoT device, and also want some sort of segregation. So, in, in especially in a manufacturing plant or in a retail store or in in a, in a warehouse, you know, these kind of in, in even in healthcare departments, you have multiple IoT devices doing different different tasks, right? In those scenarios, let's say you have uh, 15 devices of IoT doing task number one, 15 devices of the IoT doing task number two, and 15 devices of IoT doing task number three. So you can actually define different keys for them and put them in different VLANs also. So it becomes extremely beneficial in, in you know on that front. That is one use case. Uh, anywhere you know uh, in in a co living use in a, in a co living use case or a co working use case. You can use the uh, concept of and, and this kind of configuration of a multiple pre shared key. Uh, but I'll, I'll just uh, walk you through how to configure this. I selected the SSID as new MPSK that, that we just created like two minutes back. Now I want the VLAN to be, what, what did I define? I defined VLAN number 10, 20, and 30, if you remember. So I'll, I'll put IoT1 as in VLAN number 10. And uh, let me, uh, I can enter my own passphrase or I can uh, generate a random passphrase also. It's totally up to me. But I'll, I'll write, uh, IOT underscore one two one two three four. I'll just type that once again. IOT underscore one two three four. Okay, let me reveal that for all of you. This is the password for IOT one, and the expiration date is also something which I can configure on my own. I'll I'll write yes. I want to I, I want to make sure this is this is expiring in uh in in um let's say uh you know what I'll change it to days. I want to give the access to this for five days. Okay. Uh, and I want to also make sure this is used on multiple users. If I want, I can give a single pre-shared key for a single MAC address also. You know, this is the flexibility we get. I can you put it to single user and I can define the MAC address which which will use this multiple, you know, this, this particular pre-shared key. This gives extra security. But yeah, if you have multiple devices, you probably will have to manage a lot of keys. So in that scenario, you know, you club them together and, and, and this is pretty much what I would do. I would, I would change it to multiple users uh, and then, you know, uh, assign it to the IOT one uh, key and then to VLAN number 10. So, so this is, this is again, depending on the use case, it can be assigned to multiple users or, or, or it can be assigned to a single user as well. Now, this is the role uh, field, which I can give whatever. Uh, so let's say I want to give this to uh, IOT. This is in the manufacturing unit. Okay. Uh, so this I'll, I'll name IoT one key as you know being in manufacturing. Another field uh, which is given to us here is notify by email. Now now pay attention to this because this is also introduced very recently. What this does is guys, if you define your email address here, 
then this key will be sent to you on an email along with the QR code. So if you are, uh, you know, walking into a building or you want to connect onto the Wi-Fi, this can be used for you. And it can, you know, they can email you the, you know, the key and you can actually use a QR code scanner to just simply scan the, uh, scan the uh, code and, and get onto the Wi-Fi directly. That's also uh, quite, quite useful. There are multiple use cases for that as well, wherein, you know, you, you basically have uh, an area where let's say there is a boardroom and a meeting happening. Okay. And for the entire boardroom, you have one SSID that is uh, boardroom number one underscore SSID. And then you can create one common key for all of them and take a printout and, you know, stick it onto the table where, you know, people can walk in and just scan their phone onto the QR, you know, scan the QR onto their phone's camera and directly hop onto the uh, Wi-Fi SSID, right? That is one use case for that. So anyway, this is, this can be used for, you know, it is extremely beneficial. Define your email address here and then, you know, email will be sent to you with the right, with the key. I'm going to uncheck that for now. I don't want to receive any email right now. So I'll click on save you know so it'll just take a second and the key will pop up here okay fantastic it does uh yeah so it says modified time is this and expiration after five days this is exactly what we defined and i will write down i'll add another key which will be iot underscore two and ssid would be mpsk we then i'll give this 20 so all the all the clients using I, this uh uh key will be sent on to vlan number 20 Passphrase is IOT underscore uh, two underscore one, two, three, four. Expiration date, I want to give a different date this time. I want to I make sure, you know. Uh, okay, let's say this should expire tomorrow. And I want to use it for multiple pre shared keys, or I want to use this for a single MAC address. I want to define the MAC address as. Okay, this looks good. This is a bogus MAC address, of course. I'll define the role as instead of manufacturing, I'll I'll uh, developers or development. This is for the development team. Okay. Uh, the and and of course I can also make sure I I can check this for the email. I don't want to do that. I'll click on save. Uh, the moment I do that, it's going to spin and and get the other key also uh, with me. If you see now the MAC address field is filled with this. And the maximum usage field is, you know, changed to blank because, you know, you only have one MAC address use this. Okay. I'll create one more key for the last VLAN, IOT underscore three. Uh, and SSID is NPSK. I'll change the VLAN to 30 here. And the passphrase will be IOT underscore three underscore one, two, three, four. Expiration date, I want to keep it to none. I don't, I don't want this to expire. And usage is, of course, I'll leave it to multiple. Role can be... Uh, for the information technology team, okay? So, and uh, I'll click on save. Now, all these three keys are created right now in the pre-shared key. And by the way, we created that under the org, org area, right? So if you have a common space where, you know, a lot of uh, companies work like we work, if you have a common living area like dormitories, if you have an old age home or, or a healthcare department, wherever, you know, you have, you know, people from different uh, streams coming in and working together or staying together, this is a pretty handy use case. This is a pretty handy way of configuring uh, SSID for them, which will give them the ease of a pre-shared key, but also the flexibility of a .1x authentication, okay? So let me uh, show you once these keys are created, how will this look like in the WLAN? Let's go back there. I, I go to the config template, uh, WLAN template. I click on the SSID. Now, if you see, uh, It is changed. It is it is done as local, and let me. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this was checked. Cool. So this is this is pretty much how you configure, uh, you know, a WLAN with with multiple pre-shared key, and and we have also discussed the use cases around uh, where ex where exactly we can use that. Okay. And uh, if you want, you can quickly come and delete the delete the pre-shared key, add more pre-shared keys. It's totally up to the uh, the flexibility of the user and the use case. You can also this so this was done on the org level. If you see this, this this was pretty much done on the org level, right? We went into the org tab and we created this. It can also be done on the site level. Okay, I can create a WLAN for my site, and I can create these pre-shared keys for the site as well. So the the functionality remains absolutely same, but instead of the org level, you can create that on the site level also. For the site level pre-shared keys, I'll give you an example. Uh, I will, I will, I'll show you how the site level pre-shared keys look like. I've created all of them already. So I'll click on this. I'll show you that 
in the site level pre shared key, there is no option for expiration. So you don't get an option to for the expiration date of the key, right? Apart from that, everything else remains the same. Uh, you can define it, uh, define the role, the password, and the uh, the the VLAN ID, SSID, all those things you can do. Also notify using the email, but you don't get the option for an expiration. So I would always, I mean, what I would do is I would use the uh, SSID and and the pre shared key on the org level, uh, and then you know uh, make use of that. So uh, this is this is pretty much what you know and how you configure an MPSK. Uh, multiple pre shared key and and uh, yeah it's 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 widely used nowadays i would say a lot of people are still unaware even though it's widely used a lot of people who are new to this uh, wi fi field are still unaware of how this works so and and recently the reason why i created this video was also recently that i was giving a session to a you know a customer and he wasn't aware of this so that's when i realized you know that 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 maybe people still need to know about what this is and how this is configured on the MIST dashboard and, and in which scenarios we use this. So I hope this video was able to explain you that. Uh, anyway, in case you end up configuring this on your network and you have some questions, uh, any doubts that you're not able to see the, the, the keys and you know you wanna explore more, you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can always drop me a comment on the video. And uh, you know, I'll be more than happy to take you, uh, you know, take you for a walk through the dashboard. Uh, always uh, excited to do that with the Miss dashboard. And uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully this was helpful, guys. And reach out to me in case you have questions. Uh, thank you so much, and I hope you have a really wonderful day. Goodbye. Thanks.